Chapter 14. A Trick of the Trail. Ricky knew he could not jump out of the way in time to avoid having the ram butt him. What could he do? I'll try something, he thought in desperation. Just as the huge sheep reached him, Ricky leaped into the air and grabbed the ram's horns. He landed with a thud astride the animal's nose, causing a loud baw of pain. Bravo, yelled Diego, rushing up and halting the ram. Back of him was Jim, the tall blonde herder. He shook his head as if he could not believe what he had just seen. You're a very brave little fellow, he praised Ricky. Then he turned to the ram. As for you, he scolded, you should learn better manners and slapped the animal's nose. Now that the incident was over, Ricky was shaking with fright, but he tried not to show it. He patted the big sheepdog who bounded up to him. Jim explained that King Rudy, the ram, and Rover, the dog, were not very good friends. King Rudy doesn't like to take orders from him, the herdsman said. What kind of orders, Ricky asked. Jim said that the dog was very good at bringing in the sheep who strayed into the woods or a distance away from the hill. But Rudy never wanted to mind and sometimes tried to jab Rover with his horns. As Ricky admired Rover, Diego took three letters and a notebook from his pocket and handed them to Jim. The herder wrote several figures in the book, then gave it back. Dad'll be glad to hear none of your sheep have been rustled, he said. I guess we can thank Rover for that, Jim remarked. He's a great watchdog. The other herds have lost quite a few, Diego told him. Well, Ricky, let's go. Oh, please, not yet, the little boy begged. I want to see Rover bring in some sheep. Jim said this was not usually done until evening, but he would put on a little show for Ricky. I can't get all 500 of them here now, though, he added with a chuckle. 500 sheep? the boy exclaimed. You take care of all of them by yourself? With Rover, he's worth half a dozen men, Jim said, calling the beautiful dog to him. He can't count, yet he never stops collecting our sheep until he is every one in. And what's more, if a lamb from a neighbor's flock gets mixed in with ours, he'll chase it away. Boy, he's sure smart, Ricky said admiringly. Jim looked at his dog, who cocked his head, awaiting instructions. Go get Karakul, he commanded. There was a slight pause, then Rover bounded off. What's a car, car, Ricky began. You wait and see, Diego said, laughing. Five minutes later, they heard barking in a nearby woods, and soon a pure black sheep ran out. Rover chased him to his master and the boys. Meet our Karakul, Jim said. He's kind of rare. Ricky had never seen a black sheep and thought his wool very beautiful. He thanked Jim for letting Rover bring him in, then climbed onto his pony. As he and Diego rode off, the ranch boy glanced up at the sun. It's nine o'clock, he said. Pete and Pam and Dolores must be starting out for Mystery Mountain. Diego was right. Pete and Pam had obtained their parents' consent to go, but only if Dolores went along. Although younger than the others, she was a seasoned rider and knew the country because of long overnight trips with her father and brother. Jack and Helen Moore had received permission as well. At this moment, the little cavalcade was standing in front of the Bishop's ranch house, saying goodbye to Mr. and Mrs. Moore. Pete was astride Spot, Pam had Pal, and Dolores was riding cutie. The Hollisters were wearing their new fur-trimmed cowboy clothes. You'll be careful and stick together, won't you, Mrs. Moore said. We promise, they chorused. The children chattered happily as they cantered over the range with Pete in the lead. He had the map from Mesquite's hideout in his pocket and was following the directions indicated. Reaching a wooded section with a steep grade, they slowed to a walk. From time to time, Pete consulted the map. They went down one steep gully and up another. The ground was strewn with big boulders, which made the going hard for the horses. 
Can't we take a trail? Helen asked finally. I don't care if it takes longer to get to Mystery Mountain. It's too late to turn back now, Pete replied. Anyway, I'm afraid we'd miss the directions on the map. He led them down into a gulch that was so steep the children had to lean far back in their saddles. Halfway to the bottom, Helen's horse slipped on a loose stone and fell to his knees. The girl went over his head. Fortunately, she landed in a bed of moss. Oh dear, she cried, jumping up. I hope my horse hasn't broken a leg. Dolores quickly dismounted to examine the animal. No, nothing's broken, she said in relief. But this is wild country. I've never been here before. The Moore children suggested that they turn back, but the Hollisters and Dolores urged them to go further. Mystery Mountain did not seem to be very far away now. Okay, Jack said finally. You're better pioneers than we are. Lead on. Their horses' hoofs drummed against the sandy ground, leaving little puffs of dust behind them. When they came to an open spot, Dolores reined in and pointed. See that tall Savine tree over there? It's much higher than the trees around it. I'm sure that's the one on the map. Eagerly, the young riders cantered toward the tree, carefully picking their way across the rough ground. Pam was the first to reach the Savine. She held up her hand for the others to stop. This must be the landmark, she said, turning in her saddle. But look over there, we're at the rim of a small canyon. The others were amazed to find themselves so close to the precipice. They dismounted and led the horses to the edge and looked down into a narrow valley. It was about 30 feet deep and was full of beautiful rock formations. Oh, I know what this is, Dolores exclaimed. I've heard Daddy call it the Hidden Canyon. Ancient people who lived here used it as a ceremonial place. Then it might be a clue to Mystery Mountain, Pete said, glancing at his sister. Has anybody ever explored it? Pam asked Dolores. The dark-eyed girl nodded. A group of high school children had a dig here last summer, she said. Jack scratched his head. A dig? What's that? Part of the fun of living out west, Dolores replied, looking across the canyon. There are lots of hidden treasures and buried towns around here. Men from the museum are always hunting for them. And kids hunt too? Jack's eyes widened. Sure, that's what we call a dig. The children from Sunrise found the remains of an old Pueblo here. Pete snapped his fingers. Let's go down and look around. Jack and Helen now were as eager as the others. All the children hurried back to the Savine tree and tied their horses. Then they worked their way down to the canyon wall. Oh, I see where people were looking, Pam cried out, reaching the bottom. She ran over to a low square wall of ancient adobe bricks. Most of them were broken or worn smooth. The skeleton of an old building, Pete observed. At this remark, Helen looked nervous. Are there any skeletons of people around, do you think? There may be, Pete answered, but don't worry, they can't hurt you. Helen did not reply, but Pam noticed that her friend seemed a little scared. So she took her by the hand and said, come on, let's look for a treasure. The five children worked their way over the old dig until Pete came upon a broken shovel. Crickets, he exclaimed, I can really use this. The broken handle was so short that the boy had a hard time pushing it into the ground. The others wandered about overturning stones. Finally, Pete stopped and mopped his forehead. Phew, anybody want to try this for a while? I do, his sister volunteered, running to get the shovel. But I'm going to dig over there. She pointed to a small knoll. I'll help you, Dolores offered. Me too, Helen said. The three girls left the boys, and when they reached the knoll, Pam pushed the shovel deep with her foot. Do you suppose this is an old burial place? Helen asked, looking from one girl to the other a bit fearfully. It might be, Dolores replied, as she helped to brush away the loose soil with her hands. All at once, the shovel struck something hard. At first, Pam thought it was a rock and dug around it. 
Then she reached into the hole. The object was not smooth. Pam took her handkerchief and wiped the earth from it as Dolores and Helen looked on eagerly. This feels like, like a face, Pam gasped. When Helen heard this, she screamed and jumped back. A skeleton! Jack, Pete, come here quick, we found a skeleton! By the time the boys had raced over and looked into the hole, Pam was digging furiously. It's not a skeleton, she said excitedly. Help me get it out, Pete. The brother and sister reached down and pulled up a strange stone object about the size of a football. Pam was the first to realize what it was. The head of a stone doll, she cried out. Pete whistled. The ancient doll makers must have lived here. We're on the right trail, Pete shouted. Mystery Mountain can't be far away. Dolores said something rapidly in Spanish. When the children looked at her, she smiled and added, We'll tell the ar ar archaeologist, Pam helped her. That's right, the Spanish-American girl said. The men at the museum and Sunrise are always looking for things like this. But first, we're going to find Mystery Mountain, Jack said, and the others agreed. Then he suggested, let's mark this spot and come back later. We'll go for our horses now. Pete carried the stone doll head under his arm and led the others back to the wall of the canyon. But halfway up, they were startled by the sound of hoofbeats. Pete handed the doll head to his sister and scrambled upward to the edge of the slope. With a bewildered look, he called down, Good night, our horses! They've run away!